Losing the last 5 to 10 pounds can be the trickiest in your journey and so in this video I want to share the top 6 mistakes that I made in my weight journey that kept me stalled for years and how I finally broke through a plateau that helped me lose the last 5 pounds. Watch till the end of the video to know exactly what I did so you could do it too. The first mistake I made is that I thought that when my weight went up, something was wrong with me instead of looking at my behaviors. When the weight would go up, I would take it personally and whenever I did that, it would often lead me to do something even more unhelpful for my weight loss. I would start thinking negative thoughts about myself. I would start talking myself negatively and when I felt bad, it would make me want to stop taking care of myself. I'd stop planning my meals, I'd stop cooking healthy food, I'd only want to eat convenient food, and then it just sent me to the spiral of not losing weight even more. So the first thing I had to do before I even got started on my weight loss journey is I had to talk to myself in a way that was more compassionate and neutral because if I kept talking to myself in a very critical way, it led me to do more self-destructive behaviors that was contradictory to my weight loss goals. So before I even go into the other mistakes, the first thing I want to say is notice your self-talk. Notice how you talk to yourself if you're criticizing yourself when the weight goes up. And if that happens, practice seeing that you yourself are not the problem. It's not you who's a failure. We make that very personal when we gain weight, but you yourself are not a bad person for gaining weight. What the actual issue is, is the behavior you're doing that's causing the weight gain. So instead of focusing on, focusing on yourself personally as you are to blame, Focus on looking at what behavior you're doing that's not helpful so you know exactly what to fix. The second mistake I made in my weight loss journey is that I'd focus on eating less calories instead of eating more satiating calories. So what I mean by this is normally what happens when I gain weight is that my brain will want to go into like fight or flight and it will want me to lose weight quickly. So I'll tell myself, oh I know, I just have to fast or I just have to eat a lot less and then that will make me lose weight. But this is a recipe for disaster. If you are just only restricting calories rather than eating satiating calories, your body is going to feel like you're not eating enough and then that will make you, that will basically send your body into an emergency mode and you're gonna want to eat more. You're gonna feel hungrier and it will also make your metabolism go down because you're eating less calories. So instead of focusing on eating less, what you actually want to do is eat satiating calories and look at the quality of the calories you're eating. So it's not about the number of calories that helps you lose weight. It's about eating calories that will keep you fuller longer. So instead of just decreasing what you eat, you could actually eat more calories in terms of fibrous vegetables, lean animal-based proteins, or healthy fats. When you eat more of those foods, what will happen is that they take up more volume in your stomach so you feel fuller longer, and they also have less calories than other foods that are just pure energy like, like butter or oil or sugar. Like Eating foods that are just pure energy are not gonna keep you full, and you'll just be consuming calories that essentially will just be stored as fat. So in every meal you eat, make sure that you're eating as much fibrous vegetables and above ground vegetables as possible like cauliflower, uh, brussels sprouts, broccoli, asparagus, kale, spinach, cucumber, any sort of vegetable that grows above the ground. And you could eat as much of these as you want, like I usually eat about two cups per meal, but if you have a big bowl of it, it could help your brain say that you're eating a lot of food so that you don't feel like you're in this restriction mode. When it comes to protein, you want to eat an animal-based protein, especially for weight loss. You want to eat leaner proteins like chicken or turkey or fish that can help you lose weight. That's because these foods have more protein, a higher ratio of protein to fat content, and when it has more protein, your body will have to work harder to break down that protein. And when your body works harder to break down protein, 
it will make you burn more calories. So that's why you want to eat leaner proteins instead of maybe fattier proteins. Like at least when you're in a very, if you want to lose a lot of weight. And then for the fats, you want to eat whole food versions of fat, not oils and butters. You want to eat actual fatty foods. And what I mean by that is eating fatty foods that aren't just pure energy, like avocado, nuts, especially fattier nuts, like almonds or walnuts or pecans. Because when you eat whole food, it comes with fiber, it comes with protein, and it comes with other things that can help fill you up. So don't eat just pure fat, like oil and butter, but eat more whole food versions of fat. The third weight loss mistake I made, which I admit was a very challenging one for me, is that I was terrified of feeling hungry. The minute I'd feel a hunger sensation in my body, I would just eat immediately, and I felt really uncomfortable with hunger. It's like my body would be in a panic attack if I felt hungry, so I would just want to eat food right away if I felt even a little bit of weakness or dizziness or something in my body. So the first thing I want to say about hunger is that you have to know the difference between true physical hunger or false hunger. And there's a lot of signs of false hunger that might indicate you don't actually need food. So false hunger is any hunger that starts in the brain and then goes to your stomach. So for example, if you're scrolling on Instagram and you see an advertisement for cookie dough, you weren't hungry before you saw the advertisement, but when you saw the advertisement, that's when you got a signal in your brain that said, hey, this looks good, and then that signal in your brain went to your stomach and then you felt hungry. But true physical hunger actually starts in the stomach and then travels to the brain. It often starts as a rumbling in the stomach or it feels like maybe your stomach's empty. It's a gradual wave of hunger, a sensation in your stomach that then travels to the brain and says, hey, we need food. So false hunger will always present as very urgent, very needy, very naggy, and as if you're gonna die if you don't eat right away. While true physical hunger is more gradual and it tends to increase over time. It's not gonna feel kinda like this life or death situation. So if you're having false hunger, it's also known as a craving. If you're having a craving, you have to know how to calm down your nervous system and how to calm your body down without being so reactive to it. So I have other videos on this. If you wanna see this video I made, especially about Qigong movements that can help with sugar cravings, I'm gonna put a link to it here in this video. But I do wanna say that hunger that comes up is not always an emergency. A way to know if you truly need to eat or not also is that if the hunger comes with other symptoms in your body. So for example, if I've been fasting for more than 16 hours or 20 hours, usually my hunger will be accompanied with other symptoms. I might get weakness in my body, I might have lightheadedness, I might be dizzy and I might feel really sluggish and those usually are indications to me that I most likely need food. You also wanna make sure that you're drinking enough water because a lot of these hunger signals can look like dehydration. I also wanna point out that you wanna eat foods like I talked about in the last point. You wanna eat foods that keep your blood sugar stable because if you're eating foods that have a lot of sugar or a lot of processed carbs like grains, pasta, or, or bread, those foods are gonna bring your blood sugar up and down and so you're gonna feel really hungry. So you gotta eat foods that stabilize your blood sugar and keep you fuller longer. I also wanna say that if the hunger issue is still really challenging for you, um, you could do a couple things. Number one is in the beginning, you could eat a little bit more fatty foods like avocado and nuts. Like You could include a little bit more fats in your meal to help keep you satiated for a longer time. It, or you could increase the protein in your meal, so that way you feel fuller longer. And another thing you could do is make sure you're eating every three to four hours just to help reassure your nervous system and help your body see that food is coming so that you don't feel like you're in this panic or anxiety if food isn't coming regularly. Now the fourth mistake I made with weight loss is that I did not know how to manage my brain's resistance to change. This is something that a lot of people won't talk about. But when you're changing a habit, 
your brain will not like that. That is why it's so hard to lose weight because our brains like to be efficient and it is wired to help us survive. So especially if you're eating different foods or maybe eating less food than before, your brain is probably gonna think you're gonna die and it won't wanna change. So as you're changing the food you're eating, you're gonna have a lot of thoughts in your head that will tell you to stop eating that way. You're gonna hear thoughts that will tell you this, this food is boring. This isn't enough food to eat. It's okay, we could start again tomorrow. Just one more bite won't hurt. You're gonna hear your brain have a lot of justifications, which is all signs that your brain is resisting change. And what I wanna say is when you notice this, that this is totally normal. Do not be alarmed when you have all these thoughts, like your brain's gonna try to justify and negotiate with you. It's gonna try to tell you, don't eat this way. But the best thing that you could do when your brain's doing this is that you have to talk back to your brain, okay? Don't just allow yourself to go along with your brain and don't try to negotiate it. You have to be firm and decisive with the decisions you make around your food. And in a way, the way to be decisive around the food is by talking back to that brain that's resisting change. And the way to talk back to the brain is by number one, acknowledging the concern it has, and number two, reassuring it that it's gonna be okay. So what that looks like is that, for example, if your brain tells you, oh, just one more bite won't hurt, we could just have this chocolate just one time, it'll be okay, you could say to your brain, like number one, acknowledge it. So just say, hey, I hear you. I know that, that that piece of chocolate looks good. So that's acknowledging it. And then the second piece is reassuring it. So then you say, I know that piece of chocolate looks good. I, I really wanna eat it. I hear you. And I also know that we have a goal that we want to be healthier and I know that it's gonna be okay. We have these foods that we're gonna eat. They're very delicious, they're very healthy, they're gonna keep us full. And we can eat chocolate later when we plan it ahead of time another day. So you see that in that statement it has an acknowledgement and a reassurance. So that way, when your brain is resisting any kind of change, you're not letting your brain run the show you're being decisive and you're also letting your brain know that it's not an emergency and that you're gonna be okay. Now, my fifth weight loss mistake is one that I still honestly struggle with from time to time, and it's not having a solid plan when you eat out in a restaurant or when you are hanging out with people in a social setting. So a lot of people have associations with eating out in social situations and food especially in my culture, like with Filipino culture, there's big associations between eating food with people and that meaning that you are connecting with others and that food is love. Like there's a lot of different messages and conditioning we've had around what it means to eat with other people. So social eating can be a very tricky one for a lot of people. And what happened with me is I found myself, whenever I was in a social situation, I'd always negotiate with my brain, I'd always justify reasons to eat off plan, and I would just sort of have this like, like apathetic approach to my food. Like I would just be like, oh, you know, it's okay, just this one time, and I would just completely act as if I didn't care about my health goals anymore, or that they didn't matter anymore. So the best advice that I have to say about social eating is that you have to remember that this is, social eating is a time that we have a lot of ingrained associations in our mind about the connection between socializing with others and what that means around food. So I would really encourage you to just sort of journal on it, to just first be aware of like what associations do you have with eating with other people and food and also looking at alternatives to those thoughts like is it true that the only way to connect with people or have fun at a social event is to eat food like is it true that's the only way like 
and then you could brainstorm like what are other ways that you could connect with people and have fun at these events without food. So for example, whenever I'd go to a party, before I'd always eat food. Like food was my main attraction for the party. That was the number one thing I looked forward to. So I had to find other ways that I could enjoy myself at a party. So instead of looking forward to the food, I'd look forward to the conversations I was gonna have with my family members, with my friends. I looked forward to dancing. Like I learned a lot of new dances, especially for my wedding last year. I learned a lot of dances to do in my wedding and actually the dancing part was way more fun than the food part, which blew my mind, but I was like dancing non-stop at my wedding and I got all my friends to do a dance. We learned this Filipino lion dance called the Toto 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 and it was just really fun to engage my friends and family in a different way besides just eating together. So find other ways to have fun, to engage with your family and friends without food. Start new traditions, learn new things, like learn new activities or games or new things you could do to hang out with one another and have fun with each other without food. And finally, my last mistake with weight loss is that I did not maintain my muscle mass. Now this was a big mistake I made in 2022 when I was training for the LA Marathon because I was only running at that time, so I was only doing cardio. I stopped doing um, any sort of CrossFit workouts. I stopped lifting, I stopped rock climbing. I, was, I only had time to run because training for a marathon is really time consuming. And I was also eating more carbs, more like processed carbs. And so I was losing muscle mass and I was eating more carbs. So that was just making me hungrier and also, when you have less muscle mass, you burn less calories. So even though I was doing a lot of running, I was not burning as much calories as when my muscle mass was higher. So what I highly recommend if you wanna lose weight, especially down the road, like for the long term, I highly recommend, especially for women, that you do a strength training workout regimen that has you lifting weights progressively, heavier weights over time and or it has increasing resistance over time because the more you increase the intensity the more your muscles will build and the more muscles you have that means you burn more calories so you want to do that because that could help you reach your weight loss goals a lot easier so i would highly recommend if you needed to hire a personal trainer or if you need to download an app to do this but having some sort of regimen to build your muscle mass either through body weight or lifting weights something that will help you um, challenge your body and challenge your muscles that can help increase your muscle mass so that you're able to reach your weight loss goals and burn more calories and boost your metabolism all right everyone so those are my six weight loss mistakes that i made that helped me break through a plateau in my weight loss journey and um, i'd love to know what you thought so please leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this video and if you found it helpful and so you could take a moment to also subscribe to my channel and click the bell for future notifications so you could see when all my future videos come out all right guys so if you love this video, check out the next video I have on the next screen coming up, and I'll see you in my other videos. Bye.